The challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country with a greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. (laughs) Corporal Cleary of the Northwest Mounted Police was nearing the Arctic Circle. The cold was bitter, but the knowledge that he was close on the heels of Pierce Drew, a murderer whom he had pursued from British Columbia, spurred him on. He plodded through the snow after his dog team, following a trail that led past a group of rocks. Suddenly, a shot rang out. Corporal Cleary staggered, then fell face downward. Stop him, dogs, Chris! I got him! Oh, oh, you asking? Oh, oh. Hmm. Right through the head. Dead? Never knew what hit him. Trail leading past them rocks put him off guard like a thought it would. Pierce, I don't like it. He's a mounting. Well, it was either him or us, wasn't it? Anyway, I'm glad I did it. I had a score to settle with the Mounties. Yeah, you've hated them ever since they threw you out when you were training to be one. Yeah, I wasn't good enough for them. Wasn't noble enough. <laughs> well, I didn't want to belong to them anyway. Too pure for my taste. No drinking on duty. No money accepted for favors from people willing to pay for them. Well, they taught me to shoot well enough to drill one of them between the eyes. You sure are a good shot. Now we'll get out of the country. Maybe. Now they'll be after us worse than ever. We won't be able to show our faces to town. Oh, yes, we will. Come on, help me get these clothes off them. What? What for? Because I'm going to wear them. From now on, I'm Corporal whoever he is. I'll find out from his papers. You mean you're going to pretend you're you're him? Right. I know enough about Mounties from the train now to get away with it. What if you meet somebody who knows him? He ain't known in this territory. Trailed us all the way from British Columbia. But, But what about me? You're going to be Pierce Drew. Prisoner, I'm taken back. What? Sure. First town we come to, I'm telegraphing headquarters to tell them I caught you. That'll keep them off us for a while. Sergeant Preston, reporting at headquarters in Dawson, was greeted warmly by Inspector Grayson. Well, Sergeant Preston, glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, sir. You did a fine job down in Whitehorse. I hear your dog helped again. King's always a help, Inspector. (laughs) Aren't you, boy? You know, someday, sir, people are going to realize the value of dogs for jobs like this and train them for it, just as I've trained King. That's a good idea. Have you any assignments for me, sir? No, I thought I might have to send you up to give Corporal Cleary a hand, but I got a report from him yesterday. Uh He got the man he was after when he's on his way back. He's the one who was after Pierce Drew, isn't he? Yes, he's a good man. Do you know him? Well, I think he came in just as I was getting out of training, but I can't remember what he looked like. Oh, he's a big, red-headed fellow. Nice chap. Clean cut. Never had any trouble with him. He solved that Ritchie murder down in British Columbia. I'd like to hear more about that. He should get to 40 miles soon. Maybe you'll meet him. Well, that's where I'm heading on my regular patrol, since you have no special assignment for me, sir. Hope I meet Cleary. It'll be interesting to hear how he captured Pierce Drew. Huskies. All right, Chris. There's 40 mile up ahead. I'm handcuffing you. But Drew, I don't see why we're taking a chance like this. Maybe someone in 40 mile knows Cleary. Cleary missed 40 mile. He chased us straight up from Dawson, didn't he? Yeah, that's what we didn't figure on. But Come on, come on. Quit yapping. Put these handcuffs on. Yeah. We need supplies. We need money. We gotta go 40 mile. I don't like it. There's danger. Now, there's up... much danger as sneaking around like a couple of scared rabbits. Now, come on. We're going straight to the jail. No one will suspect us then. Hello, Constable. I'm Corporal Cleary, Northwest Mounted. Come in, come in. You got room for a prisoner in here? Sure, sure. Bring him in, Corporal. Come on, Drew. We'll take him over to cells. (laughs) 
You can put him right in here. All right. In you go. Had a long trip, Corporal? Yeah, chased him up to the Arctic Circle. Where? You must be worn out. I was just going over to Barney's Bar. Maybe you'd like to have a drink before turning in. I sure would, Constable. Lead the way. Don't worry about your prisoner. He's safe enough in there. Barney's just a step away. Now, who is your prisoner? His name is Pierce Drew. Been after him for months. He's wanted for murder in British Columbia. This ain't your regular territory, then. No, just passing through. Too bad your amount ain't can't help us celebrate. Friend of mine, Jed Peters in town. Meeting at Barney's. Jed struck gold up north, and we're celebrating his riches. Well, maybe I'll forget the rules for once. Your friend heading for the States? Yep. Lucky stiff. <laughs> he won't have to work the rest of his life. Say, you're a Mountie. Maybe he'll listen to you. We should tell Jed it's dangerous to pack so much gold around with him. He's got a fortune in that money belt of his. Here he is drinking in Barney's bar. He won't listen to me. Well, I'll do what I can. You'll probably say it's none of my business. Well, here we are, right in here. Hi there, Constable. How are you? How are you, boys? <laughs> There's Jed over at his table, Corporal. Uh, hello there, Bert. Come on, sit down. Hey, buddy. Shut up to and off my old friend, Bert, this pal. Hello, Jed. <laughs> here, this is Corporal Cleary. Uh, how are you, Corporal? So oh, that'll I... help us celebrate. This is Pierre Dupree. Yeah, how are you, Corporal? Hello. Oh. Yeah, he's the finest trapper in this part of the country. Yeah, hey, but Jed, you are the best prospector, which is much better. <laughs> <laughs> you stayed in 40 Mile at night, Corporal? He uh, brought in a prisoner who just locked him up. Well, I got a whole cabin to myself tonight. A friend of mine took off today and lent it to me. If you need a place to stay... I uh, asked Jed to stay with me, but me, I must get up early to see my trap line. And Jed... He do not want to be disturbed. <laughs> you can stay with me, Corporal. Well, thanks, both of you, but uh, I'm sleeping in jail tonight. Uh, I have to keep an eye on my prisoner. Well, I sleep in the jail tonight, Corporal. You need a good rest. I like to watch my own prisoners. Oh, you go to your cabin tonight, Constable. And if you keep on celebrating, Jed, uh, it's going to take all three of us to carry you to yours. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I'll drink all three of you right under the table. <laughs> Set him up again, buddy. Chris, you awake? What? Uh, who is it? Wake up. I got something to tell you. Uh, uh, where have you been, Drew? Over in a bar with the constable. Well, ain't that nice. For you. Here I've been with no supper. Ah, supplement. shut up and listen. I got a line on something that's going to make us rich for life. I just helped take a man to his cabin. He's so weighed down with gold, it took three of us to carry him. Was he hurt? Nah, drinking too much. I'm robbing him tonight. Well, let me out of here. Are we leaving tonight? We're not leaving at all. Drew, are you crazy? We're staying right where you are. I'll be back when I get the gold. I got everything planned. Even the man who'll be blamed for the robbery. Now, listen. Here's what I'm going to do. The following morning, Pierce Drew peered out of the window of the jail, while Chris sat tensely on his cot in the cell. See anybody yet, Drew? Uh, yes, I do. It's a constable. He's coming over here running. Quick, Chris. We'll both pretend that we're asleep. I hope this works. Quit worrying. It'll work quiet now. Corporal! Corporal Cleary! Wake up! There's been a robbery. Mm, what's the matter? It's Jed. Someone crawled in his window last night, busted him over the head, and took his money belt. Well, when did it happen? Oh, you ain't even awake yet. Last night after we took him home. But Pierre locked his door and shoved the key back under it. I told you they didn't use the door. They went through a window. Must have been unlocked. I told everybody to stay away. There's footprints there. Now, I'll go over right away, Constable. Here's Jed. He ain't conscious. Maybe his skull's fractured. Hmm. Someone gave him a nasty rap on the head. Is the window you told me about? Yep. See the tracks? Where did they lead? Well, that's a funny part of it. They lead right to Pierre Dupree's cabin. What does Pierre say about that? Pierre ain't there. You heard him say he had to get up and see about his caps early this morning. Uh-huh. Looks as if Pierre had this all planned. Oh, Pierre wouldn't do anything like that. Constable, He's... a man will do anything for gold. 
I'm going after Pierre. He's probably headed for the border. I'll go with you, Corporal, but I don't think... Oh, you better stay at the jail in case anything else turns up. And if I were you, I uh, wouldn't tell my prisoner anything about it. If he knows I'm out of town, he might give you trouble. When Sergeant Preston reached 40 Mile, he headed straight for the local jail to see if Corporal Cleary had arrived. As he pulled up before the door, a constable came out. Okay, Hello, your huskies. Hello, constable. Sergeant Preston. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. We had a big robbery last oh. night. Someone hit Jed Peters over the head and robbed him. Fortunately, Corporal Cleary was in town. He's gone after the man who did it. I'm glad Cleary's here. Why did all this happen? I'm going to take you to Jed's cabin. The doc ain't sure he's going to live. I'll leave my dog team here. Come on. <laughs> I'd have gone with Cleary, but he told me to stay and watch his prisoner. He doesn't want him to know he left town. Isn't your jail secure? Sure. But I felt he knew best. He left a couple of hours ago, following Pierre Dupree's trail. Well, how does he know Pierre is the man who did it? Footprints led directly from the window to Pierre's cabin. Oh, well, that's rather too obvious, isn't it? Well, I can't believe Pierre did it. But we'd all been drinking. Cleary helped take Jed home, and Pierre was with us. You mean Cleary was drinking with you? Well, he was tired and needed something. Well, that's odd. Cleary's a stickler for rules, and he was on duty. Well, here's the cabin. You want to see Jed? No, that won't be necessary. I better not disturb him. See the footprints leading from the window? Yes. Here, King. Come here, boy. Now, this track, boy, here. Follow it, fella. He's going to Pierre's cabin. Come on, Constable. You, you sure that dog knows what he's doing? He's better at trailing than any dog I ever saw. Look, he ain't going all the way to the cabin. He's turning off. Hello, King. Wait a minute, boy. Ah, there's a trail crossing those footprints. Two dog sleds and two men. That's Pierre's trail. The other footprints are Corporal Cleary's. He followed Pierre's trail. You see, the dog knows Pierre is guilty. Come on, Constable. Can't lose a minute's time. We're following it. But the prisoner... He's all right. There's no reason to watch him. We can get these men if we hurry. We can follow faster without a dog team. All right, King. This trail, boy. Get him, fella. After him, boy. Darkness had fallen. But the great dog, King, stayed on the trail. Preston and the constable were guided by his bark, and often King backtracked to make sure his master was behind him. Then, through the trees, they saw the light of a campfire, and the huskies lying about it began to bark. King increased his pace. He was silent, and his gray form slid through the trees like a shadow. Preston and the constable were quite far behind him. Just as he neared the fire, a shot rang out. A bullet whizzed past the head of Preston. Almost at the same instant, King sprang. No! No! Get away from him! Hold him, boy! Get him, fella! Take him off! Get away from him! All right, King. Oh, Back, fella. Get off him. Uh, Sergeant, it's, it's Corporal Cleary. King got the wrong trail. Oh, oh, Constable, it's you. I thought Pierre was after me. I'm Sergeant Preston, Corporal. Oh, well, I... This your dog? That's my dog. And I'm sure he made no mistake. He followed the trail that led from Jed's cabin, your trail. Take off that parka hood. Why? Take it off, I say. All right. I don't see what this has to do I'll with it. I'll tell you what it has to do with it. Inspector Grayson told me that Cleary had red hair and yours is black. You're not Corporal Cleary. You're under arrest. You, you mean he ain't a Mountie at all? I mean exactly that. But... He locked a criminal in jail. For two very good reasons. To convince you that he was a Mountie and to keep all the loot for himself. He was headed for the border and he'd have made it if that hadn't been for King. <laughs> Fine job, King, old fella. Good work. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>